We're here today to put together the bass kick drum kit from Reckless Experimentation Audio. First thing you should do when you open the kit is take everything out and verify that it is, you have all the parts. Instructions come folded within the kit. Full color instructions are available on the website. Sorting all the parts before you begin makes assembly much easier. Required tools are a soldering iron, a pair of wire cutters, a pair of needle nose pliers, and of course solder. It is recommended if doing this indoors to use a fume extractor. Start with the smallest parts first which would be the resistors. Refer to the instructions any time. Let's start with the, the 470 ohm resistor which will be R12 and R20. If you have trouble identifying the resistors by their color code, don't be afraid to use a multimeter. Fold the resistors over. Slide them through the holes. Bend the leads back. On the underside, apply a solder and a soldering iron to each joint. And then with a pair of wire cutters, cut the remaining legs. Repeat this process for the 1K resistors, which are R9 and R18. You need the, if the silk screen is hard to read, refer to the second page of the instructions and you'll see a much bigger version that's easier to read. Next is the 47 kilo ohm resistor. There are, there are four of on this circuit board. Resistors 4, 10, 11, and 13. Next is the 100K resistors, R2, 3, 6, and 8.
Next is a single 470 kilo ohm resistor, which is R17. Followed by the final fixed resistor, a 2.2 mega ohm resistor, R19. Next are the capacitors starting with C11 and C12 which are one microfarad apiece. Next are C7 and 8 which are 0 0.033 microfarads. And they are right next to each other on the board. All the remaining rectangular symboled capacitors on the board are these 0.1 microfarad capacitors. C1, 2, 3, 5, 9, and 10. Next, it's a good idea to put in the two chip sockets, which are found on the foam piece, to prevent the legs being bent during shipping. Make sure that the notch on this PCB lines up with the notch on the socket. Next, it's a good time to solder the power connector. Make sure the so short side is soldered into the board and the legs face out away from the board. Next are the 3906 transistors marked Q1 and Q2. Next are the 3904 transistors marked T1 and T2. Next are the electrolytic capacitors C4 and C6. Note the long leg goes to the plus side on the PCB. Next, 
attach the connectors to the circuit board. On version 1.0 circuit boards, the connectors need to have their legs filed down slightly to fit in the holes. This would be rectified on version 2 circuit board. Now take the faceplate out of its wrapping. Next, place but don't solder the potentiometers on the circuit board. The 1K potentiometers go here and here. They're denoted by a 102 on top of the part. And the 1 mega ohm potentiometers go here and here, and they're denoted by a 105 at the top of the part. Then take the faceplate. And this will take a little bit of wiggling, but it'll go. And then slide it over the parts until everything is kind of uh, lining up. And then put the washers and nuts on the parts, only finger tight for right now, to hold everything into position. Once all the nuts and rings on the potentiometers and connectors are secured, you can now flip the, the piece over and solder the legs on the potentiometers. And trim the, the legs. Now install the knobs using the supplied uh, Allen key. But first, rotate all the potentiometers to the uh, leftmost position. And then make sure that the white line is also pointed down and to the left. You have now completed the unit. Next, test it. I recommend testing with a current limiting power supply in case any, there are any mistakes and also power up and powering it up for the first time without the chips in place simply to protect the chips from any mistakes that may have been made. Power connectors attached, red denoting negative on the bottom where it says SV1. Once the module has passed initial testing, install the chips. Make sure the notch on the chip and the dot face up and align with the notch on the socket. I recommend doing another power on test before it is connected to any other modules just to verify that everything's okay. Now with the trigger connections connected to a trigger generator and the output connected to a mixer, now with the module connected up, you can enjoy your work.